Hi and welcome. In this video we will learn the basics of identifying and using the component parts of the Photoshop interface. My name is Ken Fisher and this is LiveLink Training. Ok, let's start with a burning question. What on earth is an interface? Well, in terms of computers, a computer interface is a method by which we communicate with the computer and the computer communicates with us. So here we can see the Photoshop interface. It's everything that we see in front of us here on the screen. It's all the parts that allow us to communicate with the computer and the commu computer to communicate with us. Now it's broken down into smaller parts. So let's have a look at them and how they work. OK, first let's start on the left hand side here with the toolbar. Now this is where all the tools live. It's just like the toolbox you might have at home where you keep all your different tools like your spanners, your pliers, your saws and all stuff like that. It's a container for carrying all the tools around. Well this is the Photoshop toolbox where we have all the important Photoshop tools. Now if you hover over a tool you'll get a tool tip. Now this software I'm using now is the, the very latest 2018. So it's got a bit of a whizzy um, tool tip. And, and if I hover over um, a tool it'll come up with a little like a little video clip showing you how the tool works. So you can see the move tool and it's quite wissy. If you've got a previous version you won't see this. All you'll see is just a, a little tool tip that tells you the keyboard shortcut basically. So here we can see the keyboard shortcut for the move tool is if you look at that in brackets it's the V key. Now to, to use a tool we need to activate it. And to do that we can do it in two different ways. Um, we can move over a tool in the toolbox and we can click on it and you'll see it goes a little bit darker so now this tool here which is the marquee tool is selected or we can use a keyboard shortcut now we've already seen that the keyboard shortcut for the mold tool is V so here I am on the marquee tool and if I wanted now to go to use my move tool if I press the V on the keyboard it will select the move tool for me and if I go down here I can see that there we've got a little paintbrush and this is the brush tool. And again we've got a keyboard shortcut of B for brush tool. So if I press the B key on the keyboard you'll see that the brush tool will then be active and I'll, I can now brush to my heart's content. Now I'll just go back and I'll click just on the move tool. Now at the moment the toolbox is docked which means that it's like fixed and magnetized to this left hand edge. Now I can make it free floating and I can do that by moving my mouse up into this little dark area at the top of the toolbox and if I click and hold my left mouse button down and drag I can drag the toolbox out so I can now move it around and have it well, at any place that I want really. Now if you like a double column toolbox, um, Adobe have left that in for us. And we've got this little double headed arrow here at the top. If I click on that, I now get a double set of tools. It's the same tools but just in two columns. I prefer the single column, I've just got used to it. So I'm going to click that to put it back to single column again. Now if I want to redock this toolbox, I'm going to click and drag with these two little lines here so I'm going to left click down and hold down and I'm going to offer up the toolbox to the left hand side and you may have to take it a little bit further and then you see that blue line appear and that means that like the magnet has magnetized so when I let go now it will now remagnetize and redock that tool onto that left hand edge. Now if you look carefully, and it can be hard to see, but there's a little triangle right at the bottom of some of the tools. And this means that there are hidden tools. There are tools that are nested with the tool that's visible. So for instance, if I go and I want to go to the brush tool, and if I left click and hold down, you'll get a flyout menu. And in this flyout menu, there are other associated tools like the pencil tool, color replacement tool, and the mixer brush and you just go down to select the one that you want. 
Now if I'll just do that again, if I go up to the Move tool and I click and hold down, you'll see that there is the Move tool and the Artboard tool. So every one of these tools that has a little triangle at the bottom, if I you click and hold down over it, you'll get a flyout menu and it shows you the tools that are nested with it. OK, let's move along to the top here and we'll see what's called the Tool Options Bar. That's this bit here. Now this is related to, to the tool that you've got selected. So this is different for every tool because there are different options for every tool. So if I click on the Move tool, you'll see these are the options for the Move tool. And if I click on the Marquee tool, you'll see that the Marquee tool has different options. I can click on the Lasso tool and that's got slightly different options. And I can go down every single tool. Let's look at the crop tool. So this is showing us the options for each of these tools. So you've got to keep your eye on that to see exactly what the options are when you click on a tool. Now underneath the tool options bar is something called the tabbed interface. And this is where each of the images that you load into Photoshop, they appear, but they appear in their own little tab. So here we can see this little tab here is interface1.jpg and that's this image that we're looking at here. And it's a little bit lighter this tab, that means that it's the active tab, so this is the image we're looking at. We can see here that we've got the interface dash 2 JPEG uh, and that's a slightly darker colour. But if I go and click on it, it changes colour and here we can see that we're now looking at the second image. We're looking at the interface 2.jpg. So this tabbed interface goes all the way along here with however many images we've got open. So we've got interface 1 or we've got interface 2 on the tab. Now underneath the tabbed interface here, we've got what's called the rulers. Now these allow us to do lots of things like measuring things and this is where our guides live. Now if the rulers are not there, then if you go to the view menu and down to rulers, or there's a keyboard shortcut of Command R on a Mac or Control R on Windows and that will bring the rulers up. So if I press on this Mac now, Command and R, you'll see the rulers will disappear and Command and R will bring them back. Now right at the top of the interface, we've got all our menus. And here you can see there's loads of good things like the filters, we've got the layer menu, and we've got the file where we can create new files, we can open files, we can browse in bridge, a whole host of things that we can do all in the menus at the top and we just hover over and then we move down into the menu structure. Now if you see a menu item that's got these little dots after it, that's called the, these are called ellipses, then that means when you click on it you're going to get a dialog box come up. So I'll just click on duplicate layer and it brings up the duplicate layer dialog box. Now if we go back and have a look at another one, you can see new fill or, or adjustment layer. They've got a little triangle. Now what this means is that it's giving you more menu options. So here we've got new adjustment layer and you can pick from any of these. And you can see the ellipses appearing again, which means that if I click on hue and saturation, I'll get the hue and saturation dialog box come up. So keep an eye out for that. The, the little dots means that there's a dialog box. The little arrow here means there's going to be more menu items for you to look at. Now this big bit in the middle here is called the workspace and this is where all the heavy lifting is done. This is where we see the images and we see the image how it changes when we're working on it. And if we scoot on over to the right hand side, we'll see that here we've got lots of panels. And there's lots of these panels that load in with Photoshop. Now panels are more task driven parts of the interface where similar things are all grouped together. So here we've got the layers panel. So that's a load of stuff all to do with layers. And we've got the channels panel which shows you the channels and how to manipulate them. And we've got the paths panel. If we look up here we've got the adjustments panel where if we click on one of these adjustments it will put an adjustment layer on for us. And here we've got the properties panel which will show all the properties of any panel that you've got open. 
Now, like with the toolbox, each of these panels, they can be free floating. And we can customize the workspace as well to suit you. Now, I'll just show you. I can, if I click on this layers panel, I can drag that out and I can make that layers panel free floating. If I hover over the bottom and drag, I can make it longer to accommodate if I've got more layers. And if I want to put it back and redock it, I just grab it by the name, drag it down and offer it into the group when I want it to go. And you'll see that blue line appear all the way around it. That means I'm going to dock it into a group. And when I let go, it docks it into this group here with paths and channels. Now it's in the, the different order to it was before, but that's no problem. I can just click and drag it along and change the order of the panels. Now, lastly but not leastly, down at this bottom left-hand corner, we've got the info panel and the zoom. Now here, if we click in this little box here, we can see this is the zoom. And we can type a number in there like 50%. And we'll zoom out to 50%. Or I'll type in 100% again and bring us back to 100%. And here we've got some information. If I click this little triangle here, you'll see you'll get a list of information that we can have here at our disposal. We can have the current tool, the scratch size, the efficiency. Most of these are probably as much good as a chocolate fire guard, really. I, I tend to just leave this set for document size because I find that most useful. And this is telling me what my document size is. So I can have a look as I put the layers on. How big is my document getting? Say at the moment, I've got a document that is 1.9 megabyte or 1.91 megabytes in size. Well, OK, that about wraps up our chat about the Photoshop interface. But knowing what the bits are is only half the story. Now we know the names of the parts. How can we use that to our advantage? Well, we can by making a custom workspace that's tailored specifically for your workflow. And we're going to do that in the very next video. So don't miss it. Well, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up or leave a comment under the video for me. Now, don't forget to check out the more area under the video for any link to any download files or free ebooks that there might be. And please click that subscribe button and help me grow my Photoshop learning community. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.